Hey you, welcome to Wasted Audio. Today we're going to have a look at using samples and how you can turn your PD patches into sample based audio plugins. If you haven't watched our video on the distro plugin framework and creating audio plugins, you should definitely watch this video first. In PD, samples are usually loaded into a table or graphical array object. And there are several ways that you can load audio sample data into such a table. Many of these methods are not directly supported by the heavy compiler, but we can still use them to load this data into our patch. To easily use these methods, Plug Data has a feature called Palettes, where you can save small snippets of data that can be easily placed into a patch. So, let's start building our sample-based audio plugins. Let's look at our monophonic synth patch that we made in the previous video. So here we use the heavy.osc saw wave as our sound source, but instead we can also use various wave tables. Now this is typically done using the sign some messages, but this is not directly supported in heavy compiler. So here in the left side of the program, we have these palettes that we can add. And I've already created some wave table palettes that we can use. So for instance, a basic sine wave, a saw, or square wave. And then there's these sort of semi in between wave shapes that are a bit cruder but can give some interesting results. So, as we see, these are these special sine sum messages that are basically summing different sine wave oscillators at different frequencies and different intensities. But what we can still do is load these sine sum messages into a table and then save the table with our patch. So, let's, let's go and do that. So let's pick the semi-saw oscillator. And right now it's already set, but so what you typically do is you send one of these sign sum messages and then you'll usually want to normalize it again. Then what you do is you go to table information and here you have to set the save contents to yes. So that will save all the different sample points inside of the patch. So now that we have waveform one, Instead of the saw wave oscillator, what we can do is we can set this to use a tap osc four point interpolating oscillator that will read from the wave table. So let's try with our MIDI keyboard to play some sounds. And there we go. We can hear our custom waveform. And here I've mapped all the controls to these automation parameters. These are part of plug data and not part of the compiled patch. But basically they take the first part of the receiver and they will send the information to that. So maybe we should add another waveform and then we can mix between these two. parameter to our plugin. I'll use the default 0 to 1 for now. So then when it's all the way to the left we want our first waveform to be plus. So we we'll subtract 1 and multiply by minus 1. So we invert the logic. And we convert it into a line. signal multiplication. And let's add a new automation parameter so we can test it. scope so you can see what's going on so this is our semi 
triangle shape and then we can morph that into the square wave. So let's export our modified synth patch into a new plugin. We need to make it an instrument of course. And let's try VST3 this time. Okay, let's give it a test. So we can see it already has all of our expected waveforms. I need to redo the mapping, of course. Let's add the scope to see what's going on. And there you go, we now have a wavetable based synth plugin. We also had a drum instrument using synthesized sounds. Let's see how we can replace those sounds using samples. So here are some more snippets for loading and playing samples. So let me show you how these work. Here we can see that the open panel and sound filer objects are not supported by the heavy compiler, but we can still use them to load the samples into our table. Because it's almost 9 and 9 day, let's load up some TR909 samples. So let's find a nice bass drum. And we can listen to it using the tap play object. Maybe a different one. Sounds pretty good. So now let's rename this to kick sample. And we have to make sure that we save the contents into the table. Now we can copy it into our drum plugin. And let's make sure that we rename this. And let's find a snare. I'll just pick one at random. A different one. It's good enough. and a hi-hat. Yeah, why not? So now we no longer need all of this DSP code. So let's remove that. And instead we use the tap play object again. should work. And let's add some more controls to our drum plugin so we can do some more interesting things with our sequence. So one thing we can do is we can change the speed by changing our modulus. So let's say if we go from 
different divisions. Making an integer. And we can then divide our regular parts per quarter node by this value so we can get different divisions. We put that into the modulus. And then one thing that would be nice is if we can properly reset the sequence every time we stop the transport. So let me put an additional bang here and we will just send it into the seed object. And actually maybe we want to change the number of steps that we put into the sequence. value itself so we can have more types of sequences being generated here and let's see what it does. It seems to work. Let's try a different seed value. Let's change the speed. That works. So we always start with the same sequence of samples again. There you go. We now have a custom sample based drum instrument. I hope this was useful for you to get started using custom samples in plug data and heavy compiler. Let us know in the comments what kind of projects you have in mind and which subjects you want us to cover in the future. If you like this kind of content, I hope you will consider subscribing. If you want to support the channel and our efforts with the Heavy Compiler, you can buy our plugins that were actually created using the same setup, or you can become a GitHub sponsor or a Patreon member. Shout out to everyone supporting us so far. Alright, see you soon and take care. <laughs>